Lesson 1-3, solving equations. You should know this. You should know all of this. If you don't, that's fine. Slow the video down and watch it. First off, we need to take some word problems and turn them into equations, because solving equations isn't that challenging. So translate the following sentences into algebra. Three times the square of a number. And whenever we have a number, we can use any variable we want. But generally speaking, I'm going to use x, just because it's a handy number and it doesn't get confused with other numbers. So 3 times the square of a number is 3x squared. The cube of a number increased by 4 times the same number. Increase is a tricky one. Is it multiply or plus? Well, I'm not even sure to be honest with you. Let's do the cube of a number. Increased by 4 times the same number. I believe that's going to be 4 times that cube of a number increased by four times the same number. And these are a little bit artificial, so let's not get carried away with the general concept of translating words to math um, when we have a real problem. It's kind of a done-on-the-fly thing. It really just takes a lot of practice. Twice the sum of a number in five. Now, the problem is, is it twice that? And I would argue no, it's twice the sum of a number and five. So you're looking for something like that. And then the tricky one that I'll put on a test to mess with you, seven less than a number, x minus seven. Done all the time to try and mess with people, and I don't like trying to mess with people, but it does show up, so you have to be aware of it. That's it. Now, remember how to solve equations. I hope so. Early on, I'll do all the extra work a equals 2.21 and 5 over negative 3, 5 over negative 3. Negative 30. So the question is, are we done? Uh, the answer is no. And you might look at it and say, yeah, we're done. What's the most important thing to do? You got to check it. You're lazy, you don't want to check it. Tough, you've got to check it. Make sure you do the, the problem right and do the whole problem. So, yes. However, how you check it is entirely up to you. I'm going to blast it out on the calculator. So I get 90 over 5 is 18. Check. 2.21, 9.313. Check. So I do it in my head. Blast it out on the calculator. Keep it simple. Last lesson, we did some distribution, so I like my little arrows, but again, I'll get rid of them as soon as I can. So we have to get rid of our parentheses whenever possible because they do tend to cause problems. Watch your negative negative there. Combine our like terms, we get negative 8x plus 21 plus 21. And then... I'm still getting used to this pen. This one I'm definitely going to check because I don't like the way this looks at all. So I'm going to blast it into the calculator. I get 3 minus 1 fourth. Actually, I don't have a calculator, so I'm doing it in my head. 3 minus 1 fourth is 2 and 3 fourths times 2. Yep, looks like it works. Did a lot of that in my head. The other thing we can do when solving an equation is solve for a variable. So there's our L right there. This is surface area for a cylinder, I believe. So write the equation first. And get the L alone. Divide everything left. 
And there are ways to simplify. We're not going to bother with them right now. Notice my R's are getting pretty hideous. You can factor out the pi and have some fun with that in the R2. This is fine. If you did it differently and you've got S over pi R minus R, that's fine too. It all depends on the situation whether you want to simplify it more. So for now, that's good. So here's a word problem. Josh and Pam have bought an older home. It needs repair. They have 1685 for the repair. They've already plunked down 425 on small improvements, and they're just going to buy six doors. So they got to do some math. Uh, we'll call each door D. Again, I usually use X, but D stands for door. It makes sense. Six times D plus 425. This is technically an equality. It doesn't have to equal exactly, but we'll keep it that way for now. 1685, solve it. So they have $210 to spend on a door. I think I bought a door recently and it was about a hundred bucks for a decent door, but it depends on what kind of door you're doing. So they've got some money to spend. Or they might spend some good money on the doors that we get seen a lot and some less money on the doors that won't. So absolute value problems. And these cause difficulties for a lot of students. These inequalities are the part of the unit I expect you guys to struggle with the most. So we need real world examples and things that are always positive. Well, let me back up. Absolute value is always positive. Things that are always positive are things like distance or weight of an object. I'll, I'll go with mass. I do teach physics sometimes. We never say it's negative 10 miles to my house. It's 10 miles to my house. And then when I get to my house, it's 10 miles to wherever I just came from. So it, it's always positive. And this is often taught with the number line. I will draw the world worst number lines because it's a simple concept. What's the distance from negative 10? To zero, well, it's 10. What's the difference from zero to 10? Well, it's 10 again. So it's a distance thing on a number line. Uh, the tricky part is solving it. I'm going to show you a technique. A lot of people don't want to do it. Uh, it'll save you some hassle later. So I'd recommend it. Um, we break it into two pieces. One is if the absolute value didn't exist. And we solve. And I like to check real quick. The other one is if the everything inside the absolute value is negative. And a lot of people like to take the negative and just shove it over on the other side right away. Well, I don't because, again, it'll help me later. So solve this. And I think this will be the last time I will write out the equations. I'm going to expect you to handle this yourself in the very near future. 13 minus 18 works. Here's a fun little problem. A lot of people miss this. I move 9 over, subtract it from both sides. Again, I'm not going to show every step. It's negative 9. So there's no possible solution. The absolute value of something cannot be negative. It's always positive. In case you're wondering, this is my little break so you can see the difference between problems. Now, again, this is the technique I just showed you. I'm going to keep it simple. One is if nothing has changed, that they didn't exist. Um, move the 2 over 8, move the x over 2x, x equals 4. Check it real quick. Works. And the other one is negative x minus 6 equals 3x plus 2. Move the 2 over, I get negative 8. Move the x over, I get 4x. x equals negative 2. Check it. Negative 2 plus 6 is 4. Negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. This one doesn't work. So do you have to check? Yeah, every time. Especially with the absolute values. Sometimes they don't work.
<laughs> Seems odd. Would think it would work, but it doesn't. Can't be negative. So that's it. Get working on some problems. Good luck.